are southeast coast of Cornwall, back again at one of my favourite places to launch. We are at Lou, of course. And uh, yeah, we've just got the uh, mist lifting around us here, which is a good sign. And uh, I'm hoping to push off a fair ways today and fish some new ground, looking at about 10 miles steam to start off with. So uh, yeah, it's quite a distance to go You're on a small uh, inflatable boat like this, but I'm very confident with this setup now, the uh, 3.8 meter aluminum deck from Maelstrom paired up with a 20 horsepower Tahatsu. It is a very capable um, outfit. No swell really. It has been northerly winds for a while now. Looking real nice out there. Just listen to how smooth that engine is. Sit like just under quarter throttle and we're up on the plane. You know, doing sort of eight knots. It's just a great morning to be out. I'm hoping it's gonna be like this <laughs> when we push off a bit. But uh, hey, I'm happy because there's no mist. I thought it was gonna be real misty this morning. Um, so we've got a nice clear line of sight to this new ground that we're gonna fish. Lots of rocks and sort of fairly deep water. But uh, here we go, we can, oh, sort that one out. <laughs> All right. All right, let's hit it. Well, we're about nine miles from Lou now. We've been um, beating into this light swell and uh, southerly wind, which is not necessarily a bad thing because it means when we go back in, if the wind picks up, at least we'll be going with the conditions. So uh, that's always a positive on a sib uh, because you really notice um, the sort of difference of going with and going against um, the sort of direction of the swell and that. But yeah, it's been a nice sort of um, steady steam out at about sort of 10 knots is probably my average so just up on the plane and consuming very little fuel at that point but um, here we go we're at this big open bit of reef it looks like there's a commercial boat um, just up ahead of me and maybe a trawler off in the distance but uh, yeah we're pretty much there I've just got to get the uh, get the fish finder going and rig up a rod and, and then we can start fishing all right, there's two lures that I'm going to start off fishing here. A 55 gram crazy paddle tail in a nice bright color and a 120 gram black minnow in a natural color. And um, that should cover me. I mean, I'm in 35 meters of water right now and I'm fairly confident that this will get down. Even though it's only 55 grams, the trick is to give the lure a little bit of a flick in the direction that we're going to be drifting so that we almost sort of catch up uh, with the lure as it sinks. And it's not particularly rocky down there at the moment. It could even be sand, but it's, uh, it's certainly come up a lot. You know, around us here is all sort of 50, 50 60 metres of water and we're in 35 now, so it's a nice big lump. I've been wanting to fish here for a while and I've just not gotten around to it. Just letting that paddle tail get down to the bottom. Looks like it's there now. Yep. And then we're going to go on a nice slow wind up. I'm not going high up in the water at all, really. I sort of want to be working my lure in the bottom five meters. Seeing a few marks there as we're coming up this, uh, this slope. I'm sure there'll be some pollock out here. There's certainly some fish down there, guys. Just sort of come over the shallow bit and uh, straight away on the drop. Probably pollock. Probably a small one as well. Yeah, pollock. I mean, it's not, it's not tiny, but we can do better than that. I've not had a pollock in a while, actually. 
sounds strange I've just not fished for them at all in the last sort of month or so <laughs> all right here we go let's let's do a bit better than that please and I'll be happy if we could get one if we get a double figure pollock today that would be wicked wicked bit of fun on this sort of gear all right here we go this is a better fish a bit more weight on it nice head shakes what could it be <laughs> What could it be? We just come over a lovely looking bit of ground here. Gonna have to mark this for later. It's always worth doing a big long drift over like the whole reef um, to start off with. Because you sort of get an idea of where the fish are holding up. Obviously that can change with the tide. But instead of just focusing on the shallowest point or the rockiest point of the reef, you know, go, go you know, 200, 300 meters up tide of it and sort of drift drift the deeper parts because I wouldn't have thought to necessarily fish this bit but there's a lot holding here and well, it's just another pollock but you know <laughs> you know it's still a fish did, did feel like a better one to start off with actually actually the way it felt wasn't wasn't representative of the fish <laughs> And we just gotta try and pop these lures out because they're a little bit they're a little bit awkward these big lures to unhook there we go certainly doing well on this color for a pollock as you'd expect really bright pink but we're just coming off that bit of reef now I'll see if i can get down with it again 55 grams is pushing it but look, look at that. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's an awful lot of fish holding just off the back here. Very interesting. So I'm going to concentrate my next few drifts around here. Although it could just be lots of pollock. We'll soon find out. I'm sure once this lure gets down there, if it's pollock, they'll be straight on it. Might have to go back and get that guy because he's floating. Full of fish and the sounder right on the bottom. Gotta be down there now. Gotta be full of him, full of life down there. Yeah, that's it, that's it on the bottom. Let's see. Is it Pollock or is it something else? There we go. <laughs> Look at that holding like that. Wow, that's a better fish. Yep, that's a much better fish. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Just tightened up on that drag a little bit. Lovely stuff. That's a nice fish. Nice runs. And I love the sound of the drag on the van stall. It's got a real nice pitch to it. Oh. <laughs> here we go. This is what we come out here for. You don't, <laughs> you don't beat out ten miles on a sib for three pound pollock. <laughs> Look at that nebula. That's really, really got it bent nicely. Great run then. I wonder what this could be. Still an awful lot of life showing down there. Now we're gonna have to come back over this little spot because this could be very, very productive looking at the sounder right now. This is what you wanna see when you come out to new ground. It's always a little bit off-putting when you just see commercials. Um, on, you know on a bit of ground that you've never been to before because you start thinking oh does it get does it have a lot of commercial pressure but there's a lot showing out here which is you know that's great come on we're getting close now i think this could just be a really nice pollock seeing some bronzes down there what have we got Look at that! 
is, that is a huge pollock. <laughs> Relatively speaking, for today, you know, this is what you come out here for, guys. Absolute slab. Well, the pollock fishing is on fire today. It's just every drop over the back of the reef into the deeper water and the fish finder is just thick with them. There must be thousands of fish down there and the average stamp is, is really quite good. So it's quite, it's quite a lot of fun. And the thing is, it's, it's easy to get carried away doing this, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna fish a pollock all day. I actually got a feeling that there's some squid down here because I'm feeling that weight come onto my lure sometimes and then just and then just slowly sort of lift off very squid like it's incredibly still at the moment there's no tide and there is literally not a breath of wind just look how calm it is here 10 miles out and uh yeah it's really really quite a pleasant day to be out here but um the fishing has, has really slowed down and you tend to notice that when, when all the movement in the water stops. So, so do the fish really, they stop feeding as hard. But I thought now would be a good time to try um, a sort of method of fishing that I've not done much of, but I, but I want to because it's a good way of targeting um, sort of species that you wouldn't necessarily pick up on other conventional lures. So this is a um, Kabura jig. This is a, sort of like a big weighted head here with a trailing sort of mass, I don't even know how to describe it, and then some assist hooks that you'd find on a, on a jig. And this is only 60 grams, but I'm confident that I can work this in, uh, in the sort of like 40 meters of water that we're in here. Um, now, I believe you're supposed to work these really hard on the bottom. Now, re really, like literally just, just tapping it along the bottom. In fact, this, this exact lure is called a bottom tickler. Um, although the style of lure is a kabura, this is called the bottom tickler. Uh, it's from Fish Nugs Wild Seas. I hope I got that in the right order. But um, the idea of them is that it's to imitate sort of like a, like a distressed cuttlefish or squid or octopus or something like that. You know, some of these sort of like uh, sort of bait species that you can't really imitate with a, uh, with a traditional soft plastic very easily. And ideally, I'd have a bit of squid tipped on those assist hooks, but I just don't have any with me today. I had no luck catching squid earlier. And uh, all I'm going to do is I've got it on the bottom now in 40 metres of water, and I'm literally just tickling the bottom with it, really. It's a great name for the lure because that is essentially what I'm doing. I'm just lifting the rod tip up with the smallest movements I can possibly give it just to sort of lift it up, hop it over the seabed and have that stuff trailing behind it, sort of imitating something in distress. And you'll find that the bites can often be really delicate with this style of lure because, because you're not bringing it through the water very quickly, stuff's more likely to sort of take its time and, and, and sort of like nibble at it almost. That's a snag, I believe. Yeah, I think that's a snag. <laughs> so if you ever get in a snag, the best thing to do is to slacken off and do that with the rod. Really try and bounce it out. It's easier with your normal metal jigs to do that than these Kabura ones. But if you keep at it, Sometimes it will come. There we go. <laughs> so that was a whole lot of shaking there, but eventually the lure bounced itself free. And you will, if, if you do get snagged up and you're not drifting too quickly, if you're on a fast drift, it's very hard to get them out using that method. But if you're still over the lure, really shaking that rod will sometimes pull it out of the snag. Doesn't feel huge, whatever it is, but it's got a bit of fight to it. <laughs> Come off the reef, on 45 meters of water here. Fairly clean ground, actually. I'm surprised with this 
whole reef, it's it undulates a fair bit, but it's it's not very snaggy ground. Um, I guess is the way to describe it. Uh, but there seems to be the odd fish mark in here and there. Nothing huge like there was earlier when I first got out here. It was just thick with fish on the sounder. Whoa, cool wrasse. <laughs> oh, this is a nice, um, nice species to add to the tally for today. Real sandy wrasse here. Whoa. There we go. Nice uh, ball and ras. Look at the colours on that. That's a real sort of like <laughs> sandy rock dwelling ras on the uh, yeah on the Kaburijig. So they do work. It's uh, like a real bottom dwelling species, isn't it? The ball and ras. So uh, it just goes to show that it works pretty well. So no, that's not a bad ballon to catch out here. I don't really get so many out here in the deeper water. And look at all this that we're just drifting into here. I have no idea what this is. All that red stuff on the water. I don't know if that's plankton or diesel. If it's diesel, someone's got an awful diesel leak. There's a lot of it. Yeah. If anyone knows what that could be, let me know in the comments. I don't know if it's... Uh, it's diesel. Real rusty colour to it. There's a real slick of it, so it could well be uh, some chemical. But here we go. Nice, uh, nice to get a, a ras on the Kabura jig. All right, we're fish on here with the Kabura jig again. <laughs> I had to just throw my head cam on there, so I don't know how good the angle is. Seems that like my battery's died over there. I have no idea what this could be. Fighting, uh, interesting. Maybe it's a ras, maybe it's a pollock, but I don't think it's a pouting, and that's what counts. <laughs> what do we have? Just come out to the very southern extent of the reef here, just to see if there's anything holding on the edge. It's so slow at the moment. I've just been sort of searching around and seeing what I can find. And we have found something. I mean, it's a great way to fish for these jigs. It's kind of, it's a bit more sort of slow paced and relaxed than soft plastics or slow pitch jigs. Um, what is that? Is that a bass? <laughs> it's a bass. No way. <laughs> no way. I was not expecting that. <laughs> That's awesome. Nice big bass on the Kabura. Get on. There we go. I mean, he's not huge, but I'd say that's a 50 centimetre bass. We can check. Sure is. It's, it's over 50. That's probably going to go sort of like 55. Awesome. It's a nice. I was expecting to get bass later on today when I went in a bit, but I was not expecting one on the Cabrera jig. <laughs> How is that? Very cool. Let's see if he'll go back. Because um, he's he's blown a bit, but. Sometimes if you give them a dunk, they do. Yeah, I think so. Wicked. So that little sort of like squid octopus imitation has, has just tricked a bass. Well, the sky is looking a little more ominous now and uh, the wind has just started to pick up ever so slightly, although it still looks very calm here. I'm actually going to head back in towards the uh, more sheltered waters now. Uh, I mean, a couple of years ago, I probably would have waited <laughs> until it got to a point where I was like, yeah, I need to go in now, it's pretty rough. But um, a bit of experience has taught me that it's always good to sort of head back in before it gets to that stage, you know, sort of have that comfortable ride back so that when, when we get inshore, 
we're, we're in a good state to fish still. Um, so yeah, I've just chucked in some, um, some more fuel into the main tank, only burned four litres coming out here and, you know, four litres whilst so far today, which is just bonkers, isn't it? Four litres to come 10 miles out and, you know, and have almost a full day's fishing. Um, but, uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's not waste any time. We should have a nice quick ride back and I think I'm going to stop off. Uh, at a little spot on the way in to fish for some squid because it's still on my sort of to-do list today is to get a squid. Well, I certainly think it was the right decision to come back when we did because that wind has really picked up now and it would have made for an uncomfortable ride back. But we're about two miles offshore now in 34 meters of water and I'm gonna do a bit of squid fishing and it's something that I've been trying to do more of recently. In previous years, I've not really given much attention to the squid but they seem to be around in really good numbers at the moment. And uh, if anything, it's a little bit early for them really. But uh, I've done a bit of it from the shore, uh, but mainly from the sib. It's more productive from the sib and the sort of big bonus is you can fish for squid from the sib, <laughs> that's a bit of a tongue twister, in the day. Um, especially if you can find a bit of deeper water. Now, uh, there's no sort of hard rules for uh, fishing for squid in terms of the ground. I don't like fishing over really rocky, snaggy ground as, as you'll lose a lot of lures that way because you have to fish them hard on the bottom. But I like an area where the sort of, the contours sort of bunch together a bit more, you know, where there's a bit more of a sort of, a sort of dip into the, into the sort of seabed, if you like. And, you know, it's fine to fish over shallow reef, um, but I don't like fishing over, you know, big, big jutting rocks because of, because of the nature of the rig and the way that we fish for them. Now I like using a, a, a fairly light to medium spinning rod. You don't need big heavy gear. If anything, it's better to use light gear because bite detection is pretty important. And just, just with a, a normal size reel, you can use super light line for squid. This is just set up with what I'd normally use. And then the business end, it's really simple. I've just put a four ounce weight on my lure clip and then I've sort of attached, uh, this is a, a Berkeley Edgy Master. I don't know what it is, <laughs> squid jig. Now I like this size, it's a good size. And um, this one actually has been really beat up. I don't know if you can see all those sort of rips in it, but um, yeah, sort of like a greeny, pinky sort of color, very natural. And um, that's, that's, I think the best color you can go for really, is something quite natural. And uh, it's about two foot off from the lead there. So the idea is that when I drop this rig down to the seabed, the weight is gonna be bumping along the bottom constantly. And then the squid jig is just sitting two foot off, off the seabed, which is, that's good. If you have the squid jig dragging along the seabed, you often pick up a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of growth and stuff. Anything that is on the seabed, you tend to pick up the squid jigs just because they've got them umbrella hooks. So they, you know, they really do sort of catch everything. So it's good to have a rig that keeps the lure just elevated up off the bottom. And now what we're gonna do, it's not really <laughs> like, like your normal jigging where you have to put a lot of action into the lure. I'm just gonna let this drift do most of the movement for me. And every now and then I'll raise the rod tip only about a foot or so, really small movements and just feeling for the weight of a squid coming onto the lure. It's not usually a big hit. Sometimes you'll feel small knocks to start off with. It's usually just a, a, a sort of gradual weight as, as you sort of lift up the rod tip. And then the, the really important thing is to keep the pressure on as you wind. Um, once that squid has grabbed hold of the lure, because they're not barbed, those hooks, the umbrella hooks, there's just a lot of prong. So if you keep the weight up, in theory, the squid shouldn't come off. All right, here we go. I think we're in to our first squid of the session. I say it's a, I think it's a squid because it's got that typical pulling down and sort of going a bit light. It's weird with squid. They don't really fight much. They just feel like a weight on the end of the line and they sort of pull back a bit sometimes, but it, they don't really go on runs as per se. And the key to them it's just keeping a nice steady retrieve like this, pointing the rod tip down. Don't do the up and down that you, <laughs> you might think to do with, you know, other fish. You just got a steady wind and yeah, here we go. We've got a squid and I'll tell you what, it's actually a pretty big one. <laughs> it's actually a huge kraken. 
Oh, <laughs> uh, squid fishing. I, I got to be careful. I'm going to get distracted and get squirted in the face. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's a proper squid. I think that's probably the biggest squid I've ever caught by uh, by quite a long way. He could get ink all over the boat, which I'm, I hope he doesn't. But look at that. That's some serious bait there. Bait or really good eating. I mean, I love eating squid, but I also really, really appreciate stocking up um, the freezer for them. But uh, yeah, that's a giant. I'm re really happy with that. I'm just going to show you something quickly. So with the squid, look how beautiful they are, the colours on them. And there's, a, there's a right way to dispatch these guys. Obviously, you, you, you can't really just, you know, you could, I guess you could use a knife, um, but you can't really just bash them on the head. So instead, we're going to use our hand and we're going to go like that right down the middle there. And hopefully I don't slip and we'll see the colour drain out of him. See that? Colour draining out of him there. We'll do one more. There we go. <laughs> Just like that, instant colour drain. It's such a strange uh, sort of thing that they just have all that colour in them and it's all sort of pulsating and then one chop and it's gone. So that's a good sized squid right there. I'm very happy with that. Guys, I think we've hooked the Kraken here. <laughs> this is a big squid. This is a big squid. You can you can feel when they're big because they they really do pull back, and uh, it almost feels like a snag at first. This is a heavy squid. I think I've gone and beat my my PB again. We'll wait and see. There's always the anticipation with squid because they can come off at any time. Oh, I can see it coming up, guys. This is this is a good squid. Wow. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's huge. Watch it, oh my, when they're, when they're big like this, the, um, the water jets that they can propel are really quite something. And it's probably gonna get me soaked, this one. I can just see him, he's eyeing me up. It's quite an effort to land it, really. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Woo. what a squid everyone, got all the water. So I'm not really sure on the best way to sort of show you guys these because they're quite hard to, to grip obviously but but yeah look at that, that is you know that's sort of that's sort of a two and a half three pound um, squid right there which is that's really quite something. Um, I, yeah, I was never expecting to catch something that big, uh, today, you know, going, comparing them to the ones that I've caught already. That is, that is an amazing squid. Um, so yeah, fantastic stuff. Guys, get, get your squid jigs out and, um, you know, have a go. It's, it's a lot of fun. All right, here we are back at the slipway. Unfortunately, I couldn't catch that last bit of bass fishing that I did in close because for some reason my uh, GoPro batteries seem to disintegrate on 5k. I've gone through four batteries today. I don't know how that's happened. But uh, anyway, hey ho, it's been an awesome day exploring a new mark. That's one that I'll definitely be going back to if I want to get on some of them big Pollock again anytime soon. And uh, yeah, catching a new PB squid that is also a wicked thing to uh, to have done. I'm really happy about that. But um, yeah, the, uh, the 3AE, Ali Deck from Maelstrom performed very well today. It got me out there and got me back no problems at all. And it's such a stable fishing platform. I really do love a big Ali Deck for days like this. Uh, you just can't beat them. But um, anyway, that's enough of me rambling. Thank you very much for watching this video. Show some support if you can. I read all the comments. Honestly, it motivates me to make more. And uh, yeah, sorry I haven't been posting as regularly recently, um, but hey, I'm thinking maybe in the next video I should do a sib setup or something like that, something a bit different because recently all it's been is me going out and catching fish, which I like doing that. And if you guys like doing that, I'll keep doing it. But um, let me know if you want me to do something a bit different. But anyway, it's getting late. I need to get this thing packed away. Cheers. See you on the next one.